They have come to Daytona to begin a new season and answer another challenge. The Bush Series is a blend of the future and the familiar. It has been a finishing school for the unrefined, where talent was translated into trophies and children into champions. It has been a part-time place to race and learn and wait until it was finally your turn to win the Daytona 500. Now new names have come to class, young drivers inspired by old school style. This is their day to greet the racing world. Will they follow the leaders or will they lead the followers? The cheers of a new year are waiting and so is history. Who will be the next star to say, I did it. I beat the best at Daytona. TNT Sports presents the NASCAR Bush Series. Today, it's the season opener. The EAS GNC Live Well 300, live from Daytona International Speedway in Florida. The off season is over. It flew by, and this weekend, fans have raced to Daytona to welcome back the sport and the stars they love to see at a track where they love to watch. The NASCAR season begins every year with its biggest blast. Bush cars today and the Daytona 500 tomorrow. Hi everybody, I'm Bill Weber. Welcome back to Daytona and we're ready to go racing. In just a few moments, I'll be joined by our TNT special contributor, Tony Stewart. Each year, the Bush Series comes here to start the season. The field's glistening with veterans ready to charge after the championship. Then there are some frightened new faces in there that are hoping success is just around the next turn. And then there are some guys in the Winston Cup garage to try and sneak over here and sneak out of town with the trophy and the check. Well, rarely has that been more true than today. There are five former Bush Series champions in this race. Seven guys in this race will drive the Daytona 500 tomorrow. And there are also six guys in this race that are not in the official 2002 NASCAR Bush Series media guide. It could be a wild day. Let's get started with a familiar face. Here's Matt Yoko. Bill, for the first time in three years, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the two-time Bush Series champion, suits up to do battle in the Bush Series, trying to win a Bush race here at Daytona. Although prolific last year on the plate tracks in Winston Cup competition with two wins, believe it or not, he has never led a lap in a Bush car here in Daytona. Junior has the old number three back, the old blue familiar colors, Dale. How about it? Only twice since 1982 has a driver won both the Bush and Cup race here at Daytona in a single weekend. Can you pull it off? Yeah, we got to get the first one though first. I mean, this got a, we got a good car. Richard Childress and all the guys at RCR. I want to thank them for what they've done. I want to thank Nabisco, all the guys at track, Bobby Hudson, and everybody has done a great job for us. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we got one more in Charlotte that we're going to have a good time there. Uh, and it's just been for fun, you know. This has been a good, almost kind of hobbyish, if you will. And uh, we might come back to Daytona for the night race. We're having such a good time. A hobby may pay off. His best finish here in a Bush car is 14th, and Daytona is all about drafting and drafting partners. And Dave Burns, he may have a partner in today's field that could go with him. I think we'll know by the final lap, Matt, when his older brother, Kerry, may hook up with him. But he's had a lot of distractions this weekend. Memories of his father racing with his brother, not to mention a brand new team and a new sponsor. So, Kerry, Javi stayed focused on just racing this race and trying to win. Man, it's been hard. You know, we've been here for the whole week and been doing a lot of things with sponsors. You know, we signed on a new sponsor announced this week with 1010-220, and uh, they came aboard. We have Supercuts here for uh, Daytona and about 20 other races and just real excited about it you know just you know it's been it's been actually pretty easy because it's i'm finally here you know this is where i've been trying to get to and, and we made it and we're comfortable doing it we, we went out in happy hour and real comfortable and happy hour and real good and as far as you know drafting with people and uh, you know just working our way up to the front and hook up with Dell jr maybe go all the way to the front with him it's looking good for him so far, and guys following him up the grid, many smiles and handshakes, just the way his father used to get. To Marty Snyder. Well, Dave, I think those Earnharts know a thing or two about winning here at Daytona, but lately in the Bush Series, it's been Nemechek who's been atop of the charts. Joe, you've had the fastest car here for about five years in a row, but only one win to show for it. A lot of rain today. What effect is that going to have on the racetrack and the race? Well, it's... Uh 
track's going to be green to start with. Uh, I think it's going to maybe a little bit tough on tires to start with, but uh, you know, Goodyear's brought some good tires here. Our uh, cellular one Pontiac is running awful strong, and uh, hopefully we can lead some laps. Got a lot of tough competition. Uh, good thing I got three of my cars lined up behind me, so uh, we're looking forward to today. Start of the race should be very interesting, Bill, and this race has never been won from the pole. Today, Joe Nemechek sits on the pole. Okay, Marty, thanks a lot. We're joined on the wagon by Tony Stewart, who has uh, run this race twice and won the IROC race here yesterday. <laughs> Congratulations on that, by the way. Oh, thank you. What are we going to see out there today? Well, I think it'll be interesting to see at the beginning of the race exactly how all these cars and how the handling of the cars are. You know, we've had a lot of rubber. We've been here for nine days now, so there's a lot of rubber in the racetrack. But now with all this rain now, it's the first opportunity that the racetrack's been totally cleaned off. So I think it'll be interesting to see how the cars kind of swap around right now. Okay, now you came into this race. You didn't have a lot of experience here. What was it like the first time? Uh, it was very nerve-wracking at first. Uh, a lot of these guys that don't have a lot of experience here, they don't know when to go, when to stay in line, and it's just a trial and error experience. But uh, hopefully everything they learned in practice and in happy hour yesterday will help them for today. Okay, Tony's going to watch the whole race with us, so he'll be talking to you throughout the afternoon. About a two-hour rain delay, but we're closing in on the command to fire the engine, engines for the NASCAR Bush Series here at Daytona. The EAS GNC Live Well 300 is brought to you by General Nutrition Centers. Live Well with GNC, the official vitamin store of NASCAR. And by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drink and Bush Light. Bush, the proud sponsor of the NASCAR Bush Series. And we welcome you back to Daytona, closing in on the command to fire the engines. And here are three guys that are already fired up, ready to go. Alan. Benny and Wally. Been fired up for a couple of hours, and finally, we're going to get to see some racing at Daytona today, Bill. BP, watching practice throughout this week and talking to the drivers in the garage this morning, this race has kind of a, an edgy feel to it. And you know, the reason for that edgy feeling is because of all the newcomers in this race. Six guys in this race today have never raced at Daytona before. Another half dozen have never run the NASCAR Bush Series here in Daytona. And Wally, that's the reason for the edginess. There's a couple more reasons for that edginess. One is these new guys, this is Daytona. This is the biggest race of their careers, as well as the Winston Cup drivers, owners, and potential sponsors watching this race adds a little bit more pressure to it. Add on top of that some drivers whose teams need to find sponsorship if they're going to continue racing this season beyond today. And you've got a little desperation. And desperation in Daytona, they don't usually mix in very well. Trackside, the car covers are off, the drivers are strapped in, and it's about time to get today's NASCAR Bush Series race started. Race fans, the sun is out at Daytona International Speedway. You've been waiting a long time to hear the most famous words in racing. And here to give those words, the Grand Marshal, the EAS, GNC, Livewell 300, Mr. Ron Hellick. Thank you. Gentlemen, start your engine. delayed by rain but now we're about set to get the nascar bush series season underway 300 miles at the daytona international speedway and finally the green flag when we come back the daytona international speedway at the world center of racing it's known set to bring you today the eas gnc live well 300 season opening race for the nascar bush series starting now some two hours delayed by rain Field of cars rolling off onto the speedway to begin their parade and pace laps. Why don't we take a look at our Castrol Syntex starting lineup. Joe Nemechek is on the pole for the second straight year here at Daytona. The 98 race winner alongside David Green. New start for him, he's with Tommy Baldwin racing. Dale Earnhardt Jr. makes a return to the Bush Series with the defending race champion Randy LaJoy in row two. On the inside of row three, Jeff Fuller. This is another Nemechek car. On the outside, Stacy Compton making his first Daytona Bush start. On the inside of row four, Johnny Sauter won five, one of five red bestest rookie challenges in 2002. Hank Parker Jr. in a Dodge on the outside. 
Ricky Hendrick comes to Daytona in the Busch Series this year. He finished second in the truck race last year at this track. Jeff Green, former champion with him in row five. In the sixth row, it's Jeff Purvis. New ride for him this year. He's in the 37 car. Matt Kenseth, one of a half dozen drivers that will have to go to the back because of an engine change. On the inside of row seven, in his very first NASCAR Busch Series start, Shane Meal. On the outside, Chad Little in a Chevrolet. Inside of row eight, Jason Keller finished second last year in the points. And Jack Sprague on the outside, the truck champion from the, now in the Busch Series. Michael Waltrip, Daytona 500 defending champion in row nine with Bobby Hamilton Jr. Tenth row, it's Mike McLaughlin in Joe Gibbs' car. And Scott Riggs taking over the car Jeff Green used to drive. That's a backup car. He'll go to the end of the field. On the inside of row 11, Jamie McMurray finished 11th during his first Busch race at Daytona. Jimmy Spencer, one of the favorites on the outside of row 11. On the inside of row 12, Greg Biffle. Last year, five victories. Lyndon Amy, a new ride this year on the outside. Christian Elder has won a NASCAR Dash Series race here before. He's in row 13 along with Tony Raines. It's Kerry Earnhardt, whom we talked with just a moment ago, sharing row 14 with Kenny Wallace, who finished eighth in this race a year ago. On the inside of row 15, Scott Wimmer finished second last year in the Rookie of the Year. Tim Sauter on the outside. Row 16 on the inside, Andy Houston driving the car vacated by Jimmy Johnson and Stedman Marlin, his 10th Bush Series start. Kelly Denton makes his third Daytona start from row 17 along with Jeff Fultz from the NASCAR All-Pro Series. 18th row, it's Kevin LePage. Unsponsored, no Winston Cup ride. This is it for him today along with Larry Foyt. On the inside of row 19 is Casey Mears, his second NASCAR Bush Series start. Ashton Lewis with new sponsorship on the outside. On the inside of row 20, Shane Hall and Andy Kirby on the outside. And the rest of the starting field, Kirk Shelmerdine and Chad Chaffin. In the 21st row, rounding out the grid, Jeff Spraker from Schenectady, New York, in a Chevrolet. Failed to qualify, big surprise, that first name. Mike Wallace had run very well in practice, but could not get the top speed in qualifying. Had to go back home, the car had to go home. Kind of felt sorry for Weber sitting down there in the rain by himself, but he's got company now. How about it, Bill? And well, we're looking forward to it now, Alan. Tony, every one of these 120 laps is important, but how critical are the first few laps? Well, I think to get a really good start and just to get off to a nice clean start is the biggest thing. Just get out, find out what the balance of your car is, get settled in, try to find some veterans that know how to get to the front in this race, and I think they'll be just fine. Okay, the NASCAR Bush Series season is about to begin. We waited two hours for them to roll off a of pit road, but now they're on the track and ready to take the green flag. One thing you're going to have to watch out for is some of that water on pit road. Joe Nemechek leads 43 cars to the green flag at Daytona when we come back. Back at Daytona, continuing on the parade and pace laps before the green flag in today's EAS GNC Live Well 300 for the NASCAR Busch Series. Here is our TNT pit pass. Going to check out the story on pit road and what's going to be key during the day. Bill? Thanks, Alan. Throughout the day, we're going to watch the cars come down pit road. Now, Wally, some guys have good pit stalls and some guys maybe not so good. How's this going to work out? Well, Bill, if I was Joe Nemechek in the 87, I have the best pit stall because I have an opening getting in and I have an opening get out. So nobody can get in my way when I come in and out of the pit. Now up here where you see the 47 car and the 10 car, that's Shane Meal and Scott Riggs. These two guys are rookies. So it's gonna be real interesting to see if these guys pit together, if they're gonna be able to get in because they're not really used to pitting these type, type of cars. And you got right in front of them, I believe you got Kenny Wallace. So Kenny Wallace is hoping that these guys get in their pits cleanly so he can get in his pit cleanly and out as well. Okay, we'll watch our TNT pit pass all afternoon, and you can log on to NASCAR.com, and after the pit stops, fire us some questions about what you've seen, and we'll answer your questions as we go along throughout the race after the pit stops this afternoon. So Tony and I will be down here watching, and we're excited. Let's take you back to pit road and Marty Snyder. 
Well, Bill, it's been an interesting week for rookie Scott Riggs. On Wednesday, he almost wrecked qualifying. It was pouring down rain. He came across the start-finish line literally sideways. Then on Friday, he had a wreck in practice, and they had to go to the backup car. It has been a tough week for these guys. I asked him if all of this problems made him nervous. He said, no, I'm more frustrated because we have not been able to get into a good rhythm. And in the middle of all that, he had to get some drafting experience because he doesn't have very much of that. But he said, you know what? I may not be very experienced, but the team is. And I think the team is good enough and the car is good enough for us to run up front today. Today burns. Marty, in the year 2000, Greg Biffle was a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion. In 2001, he followed that up with a great rookie year here in the Bush Series. But last year as well, success here at Daytona eluded him. I asked him today what it would mean to win here. He said it would be fantastic. One, it is Daytona. But secondly, he feels like he's an underdog. He can't lead the pack, but he might be able to get ahead at the end and keep others behind him. Matt? Dave, two-time series champion Randy LaJoy returns to Daytona with a huge agenda. First, he wants to keep away that dreaded sophomore jinx for his second-year team. Secondly, he wants to back up his win in this event one year ago with another. Unlike last year, LaJoy's in a Chevrolet, not that potent Pontiac like his teammate Joe Nemechek. But the biggest thing he told me, he wants to get a huge bounce of momentum from Daytona to make another title run, searching for his third series title. Alan? Okay, Matt, thanks a lot. Now we heard about the trouble that Scott Riggs had earlier here in the week. And obviously, Tony, you never want to lose a car, but man, it, it can hurt when you do. Ooh, nice and close. <laughs> Just close quarters there. and It doesn't take much of a tap here to get these cars bent in shape, especially at the speed that we're running. And uh, with the, the slow steering racks that we have, once that car moves abruptly like that, it's really hard to get your hands to move as fast as the car moves. So it's easy to get behind the steering wheel. And the next thing you know, it's a, it's kind of the Kmart special. It's one move, and then the next move, you get two for one. All about experience, isn't it? Absolutely. OK, they're taking an extra pace lap here to get the cars warmed up, help dry the track, and dry pit road. Back to Daytona in a moment. NASCAR on TNT. Our continuing coverage of Speed Weeks 2002, now less than a lap from the start of the NASCAR Bush Series EAS GNC Livewell 300. No less than 10 drivers have to go to the back of this field for various things. Kirk Shelmerdine and Jimmy Spencer missed driver's introductions. Scott Riggs and Chad Chaffin are in backup cars. Matt Kenseth, Jeff Purvis, Jeff Fultz, Kenny Wallace, Jeff Spraker, and Stedman Marlin all changed engines since qualifying. Back of the field's been rearranged a little bit. And those are the same rules that the NASCAR Winston Cup cars are going to have next week in Rockingham. If you have to change engine, go to the back of the field. All right, we see the lights are out atop the Pontiac safety car, so we're going to be going green in just a second, Matt. Well, Benny, one car to keep your eye on is the six of David Green. Uh, Tommy Baldwin told me back in 1995 he had a dream, move south and own his own Bush team, and that's exactly what he's done. He's got a sponsor for this event, looking to get a permanent deal to go full-time. This car is very stout, Dave. Matt, keep your eye on Jeff Fuller. Even though this ride came together late, this is an old Joe Nemechek car. It has won races, and it does very well on the restrictor plate tracks. Marty? Dave, one more guy to watch out for will be Matt Kenseth. He has to go to the back because of the engine change that Alan talked about. Very fast race car, and he has the experience to work his way up through the field. Alan? It'll take 120 laps to make up the 300-mile distance this afternoon. The $1.7 million purse, the lion's share of it, $90,000 to be claimed by the race winner, but more importantly, a trip to Daytona's victory lane. Joe Nemechek and David Green on the front row as the pace car heads off. The crowd comes to its feet, and we're ready for NASCAR Bush Series racing at Daytona. David Green gets a great jump with that Dodge on the outside of the front row. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Joe Nemechek side by side, as is most of the rest of the cars. His first few laps will be very tense. Had a few incidents in practice earlier this week. We've talked about the inexperience level in the field. It's tough when the traffic is tightly bunched. 
The two car, Johnny Sauter, first Daytona race. And it'll be Green leading lap one. Earnhardt Jr. pushing up into second. 59 car is Stacy Compton now racing Nemechek for third. And they're three wide, about 10th spot. In the middle is the 24 car spraying. Oh, and he and Greg Biffle almost made contact off turn two. That would be nothing unusual for those two after racing for a couple of years in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Sprague still caught in the middle, fading back a little bit. And check out the 21 car. Jeff Green drives down on the... and blows by... Who is that? It's Jeff Fuller. Jeff Fuller in the 88 car. That Fuller car, the 88, is a Nimco Motorsports car. That's a third entry in this race from Joe Nemechek's team. And this is where you really have to, this is, uh, right now is the best your car is going to handle the whole race. But you've got to be looking in your mirror right now as much as you do out the windshield because you can get put in the middle if you're not paying attention. You see Bobby Hamilton Jr. up in a 25 car. He passed a lot of guys on getting up on the outside of him and putting the car he was passing in the center. Once you're in the center, you go back. Stacy Compton moving to third. Now Joe Nemechek racing Johnny Sauter for fourth. Who's that three wide on the outside? Biffle is on the outside. I just hope someone knows he's out there. On board with Greg Biffle. And just like I said, they got on the outside. They put Chad Little in the center. And Chad's going to do everything he can to hang on there in the middle. But it's going to be tough. It's Jeff Green to the inside in the 21. Here comes Joe Nemechek in the 87, getting a push from his teammate, Randy DeJoy. Four wide behind him. And somehow Biffle goes by right on the wall and takes those spots away. But he's still three wide on four. One thing Greg Biffle is not is afraid. Dave? Well, in the call from his spotter had been three wide, you're in the middle, three wide, you're in the middle for the last two laps. He didn't want to be there, apparently, and uh, now three wide on the outside is better, and I guess they've gone back to two wide, which is even better. Biffle up to ninth spot. When they crossed the start-finish line this past time, he started 23rd. Now they're trying to put Randy LaJoy in the middle in the seven car, as Jeff Green is on the inside with help from Chad Little in 74, and see ya, Rende. <laughs> we knew that was coming. Chad Little, the 95 winner of this race. He did it that year from 42nd starting spot, squeezing to the inside of the rookie Johnny Sauter. Randy got lucky there. There was a big enough gap in between those cars where he could slide down and got down back in line on the bottom of the racetrack. Hey, Marty, what's happening down there? Well, Matt Kenseth came on the radio and said he has a very bad vibration. They were trying to get him to pit road that time, Wally, but they could not. He had a very fast car, started at the back, made his way all the way up to 23rd, and now he's going to have to come to pit road with a very, very bad vibration. Okay. You know, if he could just hang on for a couple of laps, there has to be a caution flag pretty soon. There's Shane Meal in the 47 car in his very first Bush Series race at Daytona. And, and Marty was saying he couldn't get in the pits talking about Matt Kenseth. Sometimes when you're in the middle of this traffic, it's hard to get out of the way and let cars get by you so you could get the pit lane. So sometimes you have to take a whole extra lap just to get singled out so you can make pit lane. Jason Keller dropping down to the inside. Three wide there into turn one as Keller is up underneath Ricky Hendrick. Hey, Marty, the 17 car did not pit that time. What's going on? Well, he said that the vibration has started to go away, and I'm going to ask Russ Trupp here in just a minute, his crew chief, if it has gone away enough to keep him out on the racetrack. Matt has not said anything during this lap they're on right now. Might be holding his breath. Well, he looked like, I don't know, that was a hard angle. He looked like he got real loose getting up to that lap. this. They're on board 
with Johnny Sauter, and he said, okay, Johnny, let's go. But if you can hear the engine in Sauter's car, even from the bump, he never backed off the throttle. I'm starting to sort out the head of the pack now. Burns, what's going on with the 95 car? Stedman Marlin's window net came down. The bracket came loose somehow. It is not, he cannot race on this track without his window net up. The crew had to bring him in. They'll top him off with fuel and get that window net reclipped. It doesn't look like there's a problem with it. It just came unhooked, and they'll probably put some tape over it or something to make sure it stays this time. And Stedman Marlin now goes a lap down in the 95 car. This racing is back from 10th, 11th, 12th on down, you're seeing here. Front nine cars have stretched out single file. The orange cars, Jimmy Spencer on board again with Johnny Sauter as he closes in on his team, Jeff Green. Two cars out of the Richard Childress stable. And Biffle can't stand it, got to try to pass. Stewart, you're holding your breath down there as much as you might in the race car? Not the least bit. It's a lot easier from the seat we're in today, but uh, watching these guys and watching Greg Biffle in particular, you can tell he's wanting to get to the front in a hurry, but uh, you can see the first eight or ten cars there in a single file line now, so I don't think you'll see much jockeying with this first group of guys right now. Battle for the lead. Your coach Jr. to the inside. So much for that, Tony. <laughs> Yeah, Tony, you're the expert, right? I can't drive the car for him. <laughs> New leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And everybody I talked to in the garage this morning said he was the man to beat today. And I tell you what, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the old-time Richard Childress employees, the guys have been around with Richard for a long, long time, this is a very special weekend for them. And Earnhardt, in the three car once again. Bernhardt Jr., the second leader of the race. Stacy Compton went with him to second. Joe Nemechek is third. Jeff Green is fourth. <laughs> Guess what? Biffle's trying to pass. Now, there's a shot for yeah, you. I, like Tony said, Biffle wants to the front. He's got a strong horse underneath him right now, so if he can get somebody to go with him and give him some help, he'll get there. This is Biffle in sixth, trying to get around Johnny Sauter, the fifth place car. Here he comes. <laughs> He's got a bit of a run. Here he goes. Got some help, too. Bobby Hamilton Jr. He got a Ford behind him. That's what helped him. All these cars in front of him are General Motors until you get back to Biffle. He's the first Ford. And now he's got Hamilton Jr.'s Taurus trying to help push him through. Oh, if don't they push. don't wreck first. <laughs> don't push that much. And they're going by Jeff Green. Somebody's getting black flag. Matt Kenseth is the one getting the black flag, hearing his window net is down. Uh, not another window net. That guys rushing to their cars after the rain delay, I don't know. But that's two in the opening laps, and that's very rare. Here comes Biffle, trying to go for third. Is he going to leave that spot open? Jeff Green going to drive on the outside. Nemechek trying to put a little lock on Biffle there. Biffle still has that help from Bobby Hamilton Jr. This is a battle for the fourth spot. Look at Jimmy Spencer. Remember he had a drop to the end of the line because he missed driver introductions. He's 10th. Michael Waltrip there in the picture. He started 17th. 99 car is Mikey in this race. Once again, this is Johnny Sauter, the two car. Now, the two veterans here are going to line up and send that rookie behind them. Well, I don't know about that. Michael Walton said, I think I'll go by Shane Neal on the inside. And he does. Look at Jason Keller pushing the forward, too, in that 57 car. But they're all behind Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's out in front. We're just underway with NASCAR Bush Series action at Daytona. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. It is tight at Daytona. 
as they continue thundering around this two and a half mile track just underway the nascar bush series eas gnc live well 300 one of the lead cars is among the missing Joe Nemechek went to the garage a moment ago. He came across the start-finish line in third place, pulled up high in turn one, and has coasted back around. Jeff Blake, he was running, you said, third? Yeah. Things get a little wild in this group, Stuart. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of glad I'm sitting here today instead of sitting down in one of those cars. They've, uh, the, the theory of staying in line and uh, going forward has definitely gone out of the picture so far this day. <laughs> Who's impressing you right now? Uh, Greg Biffle is, is showing a lot of strength early in this thing. Uh, Junior obviously showing his strength by leading this race, but uh, Biffle, uh, even though there's times when he probably should have stayed in line, he's showing how strong his car really is right now and how much he really wants to get to the front and lead this thing. And right now, Greg Biffle is in the second spot in the 60 car. Dale Earnhardt Jr. still continues to lead in the three. The That's the 17 car of Matt Kenseth. In right in front of Junior, he's back on the speedway after they put his window net back up, and he's a lap down. He's, he's on the tail end of the lead lap. As long as he stays in front of Earnhardt Junior, if the caution were to come out and he could beat him back around, he would be on the lead lap. He's two and a half miles behind right now, unfortunately. Marty. Well, and again, the reason they came down pit road, Allen, was because his window net came down on the racetrack. They also decided to change four tires and make a chassis adjustment. He has asked for help from Dale Earnhardt Jr. to push him, hoping he can get a caution and stay out while the leaders pit, which will put him back on the lead. You drivers are always nice guys like that, aren't you, Tony? Well, I think the only guy that might ruin that plan is the 60 car. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I definitely think Junior will work with him. Right now, there's no there's no big rush in Junior's position. He's leading the race. As long as he's got guys pushing him, he's not in a big hurry. But just as I say that, look who's looking down low. And here does go Biffle. And that is a Ford. Matt Kenseth this year is driving a Ford race car, so it could be that Biffle will cut him some slack in case the caution flag does come out. Michael Walton goes with him to second spot, and here comes Spencer in the Pontiac. So Greg Biffle is the third leader of the race. Joe Nemechek is out. Matt? And now we've caught up in the back of the garage area. Joe, any idea what happened to the engine? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was ignition or something in the bottom of it. It just started slowing down. and. Uh, not a good thing here at here at Daytona Beach. You know, it's, it's a shame for our cellular one Chevy. Uh, these guys work so hard, come down here, sit on the pole. I just fixing to try and put a pass on Dale Jr. and all of a sudden it slowed down. Uh, just a shame. You know, I hope Randy LaJoy has some success and, and uh, Jeff Fuller, but uh, it's a tough day. Nemechek still has two corporate teammates in the race. Going to have to pull for those guys now. Alan. Hi, Matt. LaJoy is running in 10th right now. And Jeff Fuller has fallen back to 24th. Jimmy Spencer back in the field to third, Dave. And you see all those cars he's working with now, Alan? Guess which one of those cars he really, really needs to get to the front. Yeah, none of them. In fact, I talked to Johnny Allen, his co-crew chief. He says, we don't need anybody. He says, we just need room to get there. And so far, Spencer's been picking them off one by one by one. Well, remember the last on the, the big tracks where they used the restricted engines, Daytona or Talladega, Spencer almost won it. He and Mike McLaughlin with that terrific fight to the checkered flag last spring over at Talladega in Alabama. As Michael Walter looking low, he thought he might get some draft off the start Stedman Marlin car to get by Greg Biffle. Did not work. And here comes Junior trying to get on the inside of Spencer, and we got a spin. Jeff Fuller, the 88 car. Going around, back up into traffic. Is that the 12? Nice job by Jack Sprague to keep from running into him. There's and another car involved out there in the back stretch as well. And we see the 17 car, Kendrick, getting that lap back. Is that Kerry Earnhardt? It might have been Kerry Earnhardt. That's what it looked like to me. But Kerry Earnhardt, the other car involved in the crash. Again, speculation. We're not exactly sure. Yep. There it is. All right. Speculation confirmed. <laughs> and he certainly got the worst of it. So first caution of the race comes out. Trouble off of turn number two. Well, Ren is hoping that doesn't happen in threes. Because his two teammates are having some tough luck right now. 
Nemechek and Fuller, yeah. yeah. What happened? Well, I don't know yet. Looks like somebody got into the wall there getting off a of turn two and just lost it. That would be Kerry. Yeah. Oh. He comes across the racetrack and <laughs> Jeff Fuller had done a terrific job. I mean, to miss all this stuff and got tagged in the rear. Huh. And that's a hard lick to the right front. Look, came off the ground. Watch Jack Spring. Got them all locked up and smoking to keep from running into Fuller. Just for this. It's kind of after, after he saved it once, or tried to save it. Let's see. Here we go. Elders here driving through the accident scene in turn watch two. Him, watch him. Watch Under him. caution at Daytona. Good job, good job. Go on now, go on. Back here at Daytona, pit stops. Greg Biff of the leader comes in. They will change four tires. They will make no chassis adjustments to the car. He loses the lead to all the other cars coming on pit road, but he has drafted his way to the front. Very happy with his car so far. Further up pit lane, more pit stops. Michael Waltrip in the 99, Jimmy Spencer in the 1. The 99 car was complaining about being just a little bit tight. The 1 car told his crew, this car is perfect, don't do anything. You see Greg Biffle's 19.7. They really and truly had some lot. And look at who's that getting out first. Tim Sauter. Marty, what's going on with the 59 car? Stacey Compton taking four tires, just a little bit tight, running fifth inning, half pound on the right front, and he gets beaten out by a lot of cars. I think there were very, uh, quite a few two-tire stops on that set of pit stops, guys. Well, you know, football players get a couple of exhibition games to try and knock some of the rust off for these pit crews. Their first time to make a live action stop was right there in this 2002 season. Yeah, we could see Greg Biffle and his crew, the confusion they had in the pit area. All right, Tony Stewart, those guys that change just right sides, have you done that with your car, trying to find out what it does and what does it do to the car, if you have? I haven't done it yet, but uh, you know, I'd say that as early as this race is, the biggest concern was how green the track was and, and the balance of the car. If the guys weren't didn't have too big a handling problems, they probably were going to take two because they weren't abusing the tires. So it, it shouldn't make too much of a difference if their car was driving good to begin with. Third car in line there is the leader. The 19 of Tim Sauter came off pit road just ahead of Michael Waltrip. And so he will take over the top spot in the EAS GNC Livewell 300. Under caution at Daytona, we'll come back in just a minute. No, oh, it's going to be fun. Noon Eastern time tomorrow over on NBC, the 44th running of the Daytona 500. TNT pit pass questions. This one from Williamsburg, Virginia. You think the crew members are comfortable with the new safety helmets they're now required to wear? Well, I talked to Matt McSwain, the rear tire changer for the Ryan Newman 12 car, and he, I asked him that question. Is it going to slow you down? He said, I think that it speeds us up because it takes away the peripheral vision. So we used to worry about beating the front. Looking at the front tire changer out of the corner of our eye, we can't see him now. So all we concentrate on is taking those lug nuts off and tightening them. He said it actually, if anything, helped our pit stops. Pit road is a tough place to be during a race. Watch this. Jack oh! Jay, Timmy Sauter, the 19 car, starts to make a pit stop, but... He was a bullfighter in another life. He was. <laughs> and that jack was a red flag, right? Yeah. And therefore, the 19 car, who we called as the leader when we went to the commercial break, is not the leader anymore because he never made his pit stop. He missed the spot. He had to go back around and stop again. Michael Waltrip is your new leader. Great pit stop by Michael. All right, here we go. Almost in the air. Get ready, green flag, green, green, green.
car in third place is Jamie McMurray in the 27 car. And we'll have to check and see if old Jamie changed two tires. Or his crew was able to change four that quickly. And Jason Keller got a real good run coming off turn two there, but couldn't capitalize on it. And there we see Spencer on the inside of Biffle. Oh, squeeze for third place. Look out. McMurray squeezed Jason Keller down right on the apron. By having the door shut on you. Michael Walter, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jamie McMurray, then side by side for fourth, Jason Keller. And I said I introduced Jason Keller in his starting spot that he finished second last year in the NASCAR points. Uh, that was wrong. He finished third. His teammate, Jeff Green, was second in 2001 NASCAR Bush Street points. Spencer with a push from Greg Biffle. Meanwhile, Keller's getting that push from Mike McLaughlin. Here comes Johnny Sauter in the two. And David Man. Green in the six. Man, Johnny Sauter that... in all of his sixth Bush Series start. Running in the top ten at Daytona. And getting his very first experience in the drag. There's Bobby Hamilton Jr., that 25 car. He's shown a great deal of strength. Here comes Spencer, a little bob, a little weave. Earnhardt Jr. to block. And now Keller and Biffle, a couple of Fords there side by side. And old Jamie about to lose another spot. Matt, what's Kerry Earnhardt saying? What happened? And then he caught up in the back in the garage. Kerry, first off, you're okay. Any idea what happened? I'm fine. It's just another Daytona rookie mistake, you know. Uh, I picked up a real bad push up off the corner and uh, off the two real bad. And I was kind of easing the car through that corner, you know, backing off the gas a little bit and just trying to make it through because it was pushing that bad. And uh, it just, I mean, I was coming off real good and it just jumped out and hit the wall and then we went. Well, the good news is, Benny, he's okay and he'll be at Rockingham next week. Well, Michael Walter moving over in front of Spencer. Dale Earnhardt Jr., his teammate, kind of left hanging out there a little bit. His teammate in NASCAR Winston Cup. Well, remember, they pushed each other to wins here at Daytona last year. It, it, it really doesn't matter. You have no friends out there. Let me tell you something. Tony can tell you guys. It just You go where you think you're going to be able to gain a position. Now, come on. Tony Stewart's won all these races. You know he's had to make a secret deal with somebody to do that. Didn't you, Tony? They last till you start the engines. <laughs> and that's about as far as they go. Everybody's memory shuts off as soon as we hit the ignition switch. So, you know, as much as you try to plan everything, it really doesn't matter because once you get out there, you can't control the other 41 cars. If you, you try to plan a strategy with one guy, there's 41 other cars that are out there that are going to mess it up somewhere along the line. So the best best laid plans always get messed up as soon as you start the engines. Tony, you're, are you thinking about moves or are you just reacting to moves when they open up on the racetrack? Well, you're pretty much just reacting. I mean, if you get a really big run, you know you have to go because if you don't go, don't go. I was talking to Bobby Labonte, my teammate, the other day, and in the 125s, I got hung out on the outside, and he stayed down with uh, with Michael Waltrip. And it's like he said, we weren't very good on top anyway. And, uh, you know, he, I felt like he should have went with me, but we talked about it, and, I, and after he, he explained it to me, I thought, well, you know what, instead of both of us going back, I made the mistake and went out early, and he stayed in line, so it kept him up in line instead of back. So it, it makes a lot of sense that uh, you have to do what's right for your car, and, uh, you know, if you get the right run, you have to go, but you can't just, you can't just try to plan. Eventually, it's going to get messed up, and if you tr do try to stick with that plan too much, it could hurt both of you in the long run. Goodbye, Michael. What happened? Michael Walter must have lost a cylinder or something in his car. He's lost 15, 20 spots in the last lap, and he's still losing spots. Jimmy Spencer, your new leader, as Mikey fades back on the outside. Dave Burns, what's going on?
Bad vibration. Alan Michael radioed into his crew chief, Bobby Kennedy. He said it was a bad vibration. He's just going backwards there. He doesn't want to race it hard right now because he doesn't know what it is. No, that's a smart game. Especially when the Daytona 500 is tomorrow and you're starting fourth. Jimmy Spencer is the leader. Jason Keller is second. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is fighting for third. And we're in the early going at Daytona. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. TNT's coverage of Speed Weeks 2002 continues from the Daytona International Speedway with the NASCAR Bush Series season opener, the EAS GNC Livewell 300. Jimmy Spencer is the leader over Jason Keller, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Mike McLaughlin, and Greg Biffle. Michael Waltrip was just on pit road a moment ago under the green flag. Let's get an update on what happened there. Dave? Well, Michael Waltrip came in. They gave him a 17-second pit stop. It looks like the guys are still pointing to the right front tire that perhaps the loose lugs uh, rounded out the tires just a little bit. So his quick pit stop earlier may have cost him. They just didn't get the lugs quite tight enough on the right front. In fact, Michael said, when I turn the car, the vibration is worse. And that's not a good feeling. Yeah, he definitely got a loose wheel there. So he's need to yellow quickly. Hey, Matt, what's happening with 21? Well, Wally, Jeff Green came on the radio first, and he felt a vibration. Then he says he felt like the right front brake might be on fire. That was on lap 36. They decided to bring it in, not take any chance. They're looking that over now, but he says he felt like it was on fire. A costly, costly bad luck move here for Jeff Green. Remember last year, had trouble in this event, yet came back and had a good run against Kevin Harvick for the championship. All right, Matt, so Jeff Green now on his second pit stop, and he's going to go two laps down at least. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that three car has moved into the second position. And Bobby Hamilton Jr., that red car, has moved up to fourth. Earnhardt Jr., is he going to try the outside for the lead? Or did yeah. this car just push up on him and open well, the door? I think he had a pretty good run on Jimmy. He just didn't get the help when he needed it. I think that was the idea, to go up there and try to take the lead. But Jason Keller decided he had better, better things to do. Yeah. Couple of Fords to the inside. Keller and Bobby Hamilton Jr. in that 25 car. Team Marines racing. So Tony, you pulling for that 18 car out of Joe Gibbs racing? I'm keeping an awful close eye on him right now. I mean, you know, obviously Mikey's our teammate and uh, you know, to see Spencer up there in a Pontiac and Mikey in a Pontiac, you know, you got two guys in the same brand that might be able to work together here later. McLaughlin in the 18, racing Greg Bickle in the 60. That'll be for fifth place. And there's Stacy Compton right behind them in that red, white, and blue 59. Compton going to do the, uh, the double, just like Kevin Harvick did last year, run all the NASCAR Bush Series and NASCAR Winston Cup Series races. So Stacy Compton, 59, gives a big push to Biffle, gets him by McLaughlin. Out the back bumper of the Granger Ford. Stacy Compton was right there on the back bumper, going down the back stretch, but now looks like he's falling back a couple of car lengths. Well, Stacy looks like he's running a little bit higher in the corners than some of the other cars. I don't know if he just has a push, but he just doesn't seem like you see right there. He runs about a groove higher than everybody else. Now the red, white, and blue car to his inside, that 47, is Shane Meal. That is Steve Meal's son, his first NASCAR Bush Series race ever, comes at Daytona. Here comes Johnny Sauter with a move on him. Three wide on the backstretch, two of them rookies. Oh, man, isn't it? Oh, no, Johnny, be careful. Isn't it great to be young? That two-car, Johnny Sauter, 23 years old, and Shane Meal even younger than that. Now racing at Daytona. <laughs> Just crossed 100 miles, a third of the way in to the EAS GNC Livewell 300. Jimmy Spencer is the leader at Daytona. Welcome back live to Daytona on TNT, the EAS GNC Livewell 300, the season opener for the NASCAR Push Series. Jimmy Spencer continues to lead at the front of this field. Now, just moments ago, this was the action coming off of turn two. A 92 car up into the wall. 
That was Andy Houstonville. That's Looked right. Like he picked up that push off the corner, just like Kerry Earnhardt did. You saw that happen, didn't you, BP? Yes, I did. And I said, oh, we got trouble off too, but he did a great job to save the car. Some fabulous racing here in the first 100 plus miles of this race. Now, since the inception of the Bush Series in 1982, only two drivers have won the NASCAR Bush Series race on Saturday and the Daytona 500. Bobby Allison in 1988 and Darrell Waltrip in 1989, our stacker two Daytona weekend sweeps. How about it, Tony Stewart? These guys running today, the seven of them that are running tomorrow. They getting some an edge on you right here, sitting here, goofing off? I don't think so. I'm sitting here watching. I'm going to go over and pick Jimmy Spencer's brain, though, and find out exactly how the racetrack was at the beginning of the race. But if you look in the corners and you see all the rubber that's coming down now, I think it's going to put the racetrack pretty close to the way it was when we started. Great racing for second behind Spencer. Jason Keller and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Locked right up. And Spencer, he goes down to help the inside line a little bit, and then he'll go back to the outside, help him a little bit. On board with Jason Keller, as we see Greg Biffle. The fourth place car in June, he got a little, gets a little loose, getting in three that time. Mike McLaughlin, Bobby Hamilton Jr., Johnny Sauter, Stacy Compton, Shane Meal, all in this big pack. Shane Meal done a good job. He's done a terrific job today. Yeah, get off your butt. You caught a glimpse of Michael Waltrip's car there. Michael is one lap down, 33rd place. After that unscheduled stop of a minute ago, Jeff Green, after his two pit stops, is two laps down in 35th. Oh, Johnny, Johnny. Be careful. The first 18 ran up on Jason Keller. Got, looked like he got the nose in his tail. Got him a little bit loose. He checked up. Then the two car, Mr. Sauter, did the same thing. So these guys are getting a little closer. Johnny, be careful. Sounds like you're trying to write a song. You know, before this is over, we might be talking about Johnny Be Angry. Wasn't that a song? Jeff Curtis. 37 car. A couple of times a Daytona winner in ARCA competition is on the move. And that was Jimmy Spencer's radio we heard a minute ago. There's Curtis in that 37. Remember, he was one of the guys that had to drop to the back of the field for the start after changing engines since qualifying. He's up to eighth. Since we went back onto the green flag, which was at lap 27, 28, I'm sorry. Matt Kenseth, remember the pit stop for the window net that had come down, dropped him to the tail end of the lead lap, got the lap back on the caution. And right now it's doing very well, as is Jeff Purvis. And we saw Michael Walt with the 99 car. Cars back up to speed, but he now is one lap down. That's Chad Little in the 74, 95 winner of the race. Silver and white car. Started 42nd that day. Was running in the lead pack. A big crash happened off turn four. Coming to the checkered flag. Out of the cloud of smoke came Chad Little. And he won the race. Wasn't leading when he took the white flag. Ten laps from halfway. In the NASCAR Bush Series, EAS GNC Live Well 300 at Daytona. Five lead changes in this race so far. Jimmy Spencer is on top. The EAS GNC Live Well 300 is brought to you by Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Burn fat, crush cravings, and supercharge your energy. And by Midas. See Midas for all your car care needs. Midas, we do that. After a two-hour delay for rain, the NASCAR Bush Series season opener is underway at Daytona International Speedway. In fact, we're coming up on halfway now, and Jimmy Spencer, one of five drivers who've led the event. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is second, Jason Keller third, Mike McLaughlin fourth, and Johnny Sauter rounds out that five-car lead draft. Let's get some updates 
as we go through the field, starting with Dave Burns. Well, and our leader, Jimmy, actually, he's been uh, kind of swapping back and forth there, but fully in command of the lead now. I asked Johnny Allen, his crew chief, if he did, in fact, make any changes on that pit stop. He said, no, don't want to change that car. He said, Jimmy did say on the radio that the 57, Jason Keller, helped me get up here, and I won't hang him out to dry later in the race. We'll see. Matt? And Dave, down here in the Dale Earnhardt Jr. pit, the driver of the three car says his car was earlier tight off turns two and four. They made an air pressure adjustment in the right front and left rear. Remember, the guys that pitted this car primarily pitted Junior back in the Bush Series. Now he says the car is pretty good. An update also on the 57 of Jason Keller. He runs a lot better behind any car that is not a Ford. That's why he's tucked up under the three of Dale Earnhardt Jr. His car was loose on entry, tied off. I spoke to his crew chief, Steve Addington. They made an adjustment on the last stop. The next stop, we're talking about using a spring rubber and making a wedge adjustment to Marty. Mike McLaughlin having a fairly nice run, Matt. He's up in the fourth position. Remember, he won the last NASCAR Bush Series race at a restricted plate racetrack at Talladega. He has Joe Gibbs engines this year. Last year, they did not. So he has Joe Gibbs power underneath him. A little tight off two for Mike McLaughlin right now. Johnny Salter right behind him having a very good run. The car is excellent. They will stay out till about lap 78 if it does stay green here. One thing to keep in mind, the sun is coming out. It is affecting the racetrack and the handling on these cars. Watching Johnny Sauter is Richard Childers. He chimes in with words of wisdom every once in a while. Dave Burns. Greg Biffle radio to his crew. Guys, you've built a really, really good car. We've come a long way in a year. Remember, they got no leftovers from Mark Martin in that program because Martin missed the last restrictor plate race he tried to make. Right now, his car is a bit tighter. Marty? Let's go back M up to Allen. Mike McLaughlin has just bounced off the outside wall. No caution yet. Oh, there's got to be caution. It looks like there's a lot of debris back there. All right, guys. He's, no he caution got yet. The wall with Fourth the right place front. car. That's where McLaughlin was running at the time, right and I believe the two of Johnny Sauter got a piece of that also. As a matter of fact, Sauter is very slow off turn four. Caution is going to come out now. I never see where Sauter has. Oh, and the 25 car Hamilton. The right rear tire is bolted. Oh, he just missed that wall. But look at the damage to the quarter panel that right rear tire has done. You talk about the debris over there. That's probably what caused that. Yeah, I bet so, because there was a lot of garbage on that back stretch. BP. Saying there's a piece of metal sticking out of one of the crossover gates. Look at the tire. I mean, when that tire goes to blue. The tire blows the quarter panel off. The side window's out in the right rear quarter panel. Look at the damage a tire can do when it blows. It right blew the through the top of the fender. Yeah, blew the window out of the right rear. Side window to put in it. That's Fred Not Wanky, the crew chief. And Michael Waltrip tried to race Jimmy Spencer back to the, the caution. We'll fix it. Did not make it. Second yellow flag of the race. Mike McLaughlin's team's got a lot of work to do. And did you see that right rear tire wobble as he came to a stop? So that means the housing is probably badly bent. Let's take a look and see see if we can catch this thing early enough, see what may have happened. Here you see the 18 car of Mike McLaughlin that may have got a little contact there, and that's what happened. Johnny Sauter got in his right rear quarter panel and turned him right into the wall. Stuck the nose in on the outside. Mike didn't know he was there. One more angle, ever see Sauter. He's gonna to try to pass on the outside. Mike McLaughlin, the 18, did not know he was there. They made contact, and so we can eliminate those two cars. McLaughlin has just had terrible Daytona luck during his career. And there's more. Hmm. Nice job by Michael Waltrip to miss the rebounding car. You never see the Rick. On board with Sauter. Listen. You know, that, boy, that's a tough one to call. It could have been, he could have been hearing clear, clear, clear. That's a long way for a spotter to call it. But How about it, Marty? 
Johnny Sauter on pit road, Wally. As you can see, they only got right side tires on. The damage is more significant on the right front than it is the left front, although there's damage in both places. Richard Childress has been on the radio trying to calm his young driver down just to make sure that he's okay. Johnny parking on the radio right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And they do pull off pit road as the rest of the guys will now come down pit road. Today, Burns. Leader Jimmy Spencer skits to a stop past the line at the end of his pit box. They have to push him backwards. This is going to cost time. Four tires, no changes, removal of a windscreen to make it clear for Jimmy to see. Matt. Tony Urey Jr. already going to work on the right front. He dances now around to the left front. This will be a four-tire change on the three-car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. They've already made a wedge adjustment, still working on a car that's a little bit tight. To Marty. Stacey Compton with four tires, Matt. They do make a wedge adjustment. They have been fighting tight all day long. But again, the racetrack is changing right now. And it looks like this is a better stop for this team. And they will win the race off pit road. Well, they sure did. Well... That's the line? Is the line where the cone is, BP? That's the line there. Okay, so he didn't he didn't win it. Well, we just happen to have a camera there. Let's oh, check it out. righty then. It's the first line, by the way. It is the first line. I was wrong. Okay. He does win the race. Advantage of pit stall number one. Yep, definitely. That second line you guys saw with the red cone, that's actually where the pit lane speed stops. Oh, the actual okay. scoring line is the first line right there, but the second line is where the pit lane speed stops. Well, there you go. Thank you very much. Straighten us right out. I knew we had him here for some reason. See, this is what we're talking about. That is the last lane for the pit road speed. NASCAR will measure the speed between this line and this line, and the time that it takes, they know what the time is supposed to be. If you're faster than that, then you get penalized. This second line, whoops, this line, the one closest to the line, the white line, <laughs> closest to that line is Damn. the line. In. Stay away from that monitor, You BP. didn't do a very good job of coloring in the lines in kindergarten no, either, he, did you? No, I couldn't stay in the line to save my life. All right. There it is. What, right behind right that, that official. Big helmet. <laughs> right behind the helmet, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's give up on this, all right? We'll take a break here and come back for the restart. How's that? You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Back at Daytona, still under caution in the EAS GNC Livewell 300. Exchange of leaders on the pit stops. Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets out, putting Jimmy Spencer back to third. Greg Biffle is between them. A couple of things brought out the caution. We showed you the Johnny Sauter, Mike McLaughlin incident. Here's the other one. This is what happens when a right rear blows. I mean, you can't imagine how much damage it does, but it goes right through the top of the fender, tears that car all up, blew the uh, right side window out. It's Bobby Hamilton Jr. And he just misses that inside wall. And we see coming through the trouble once again, Marty. And he just missed me, Benny. I mean, I was standing really close to him. He was coming right at us. But boy, when that happens, it sounds like a cannon going off. It thunders through pit road. And that's what happened to Bobby Hamilton Jr. He ran through some debris of that earlier accident. And that's why the right rear tire let go. They are now fixing the right side window on that car. Pit road was a place full of close calls on this most recent set of stops. Watch here, the 57 car just tries to get around, takes off. And just barely gets around Hank Parker Jr. Now watch Ashton Lewis, he has the air impact wrench. The impact wrench is hung under the car. And watch as that hole stretches and stretches and finally breaks. Mm, man, that is so dangerous. And obviously that is a penalty. He had just taken right side tires, so obviously the crewman didn't get out from in front of the car before they dropped the jack and Ashton took off. He has come in for his stop and go penalty. And has rejoined the race while the cleanup continues, we'll take a break. Back to Daytona in a minute. Welcome back live to our TNT coverage of Speed Weeks 2002, the Bush Series season opener and our TNT pit pass question. What is the penalty if one car hits another car on pit road? You told us during the break, Tony, you've never done that. I've never had it happen, but uh, I don't think there's a penalty if you hit anybody on pit lane, but I think there's a penalty if you actually get spun on pit lane. Tony, didn't that cost you 15 grand? 
Uh, yeah, it was after the race. Oh, oh okay. I forgot about that. It was only 10. Don't give him any suggestions oh, okay. next year. Okay, 10. I'm sorry. <laughs> a little Bristol flashback there, BP. Very nice. Very nice. There is a penalty if you spin out on pit road. If your car gets around more than, uh, I believe it's 45 degrees. If you're facing farther to backwards than you are to forwards, it's at least a lap penalty. For you? Yeah. If you get spun? Dave? Jimmy Spencer on pit road. They didn't do anything to repair the left front on that car, so they must think it's not a concern. What they did do is put fuel in the car. When he pitted the last time, they said they would be about three laps short. Now that they've run all these caution laps, they can make it to the end with that top off. So Spencer back on track and maybe a little fuel mileage gamble here being played out by his team. Before we go green, here's our TNT inside tracks on Jimmy Spencer's fuel strategy. Want to top the fuel tank? Do we make it from here or what? I can make it from here if we top now. Ten, ten. Let's top it off then if we can make it from here. Almost, but. That obviously Spencer's conversation with his crew chief before he came down pit road for that last stop. And topped it off, and he's planning on going the rest of the way on fuel. Meanwhile, Michael Watt with the 99 car right beside the leader trying to get his lap back. And meanwhile, here comes Junior, Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to take the lead from Stacy Compton. Now you got a little DEI teammate thing going here. See if Dale Jr. will help Mikey get his lap back. DEI being Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, if you're not familiar with it. Meanwhile, Greg Biffle with a big push on Stacy Compton in that outside lane. That's a bump draft, BP. That was definitely a bump draft. And it helps Stacy Compton. Here he comes back on Michael Waltrip. Remember, Waltrip had to make a green flag pit stop earlier. And some rug nuts were left loose on his caution flag pit stop and put him down a lap. Right now he's in 30th position in that 99 car. Is that Scott Riggs on the outside of the yellow car making it three wide up in the middle of the corner? Oh, oh David, man. David Green, oh, he got back in line there. Boy. Right now, Dale Jr. not close enough to Michael Waltrip to give him a push by. Jimmy Spencer is back in 19th place. Tony, how about that strategy on his team's part? I think it's a pretty smart move on Jimmy's part. He knows that on the lineup, he's going to be right back in the middle of the pack, and as long as something doesn't happen in the middle of the group to separate him from the main group, then he's going to get caught back up. He knows he's got a good race car, and all he has to do is sit here and ride now. If he gets the opportunity to get back up to the front, he's going to make it the rest of the way, and everybody else is going to be biting their nails. You'd rather be behind all those guys with the fuel? I think at this point in the race, I would be. Wow. I, you know, everybody's kind of been in the in the race now for 60 some odd laps, and uh, you know they've kind of got the the race feel and everything, and the, they're being a little more cautious right now. So uh, <laughs> I think all the opening lap jitters are out of the way, and everybody's got settled into the race finally. He's, he said a little more cautious. They look like they're being a little more cautious. Maybe. Well, I shouldn't ask you. You're a race driver. <laughs> Crew chief you saw for Jimmy Spencer just a moment ago, that was Johnny Allen. He and Mark Reno, our co-crew chiefs, are working together on that car today. And Betty, I just spoke with Johnny Allen about that left front damage. They did not do anything to it because Jimmy has not said anything about the handling of the car. And Johnny told me as long as he doesn't complain, we're not going to touch it. Well, I noticed that damage several laps ago, Dave, and, and he was too, he led the race the entire time. I was watching the damage on the left front fender, so obviously it didn't hurt anything too badly. See Biffle move Michael Waltrip over there a little bit. Is that Biffle? Yeah. Here and man. going for the lead. That's why he moved him over. He wanted that inside lane. But Stacy Compton moved down to block that. Remember, they've settled down a little. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're settled down really for about 10th spot. They're three wide. And there's Spencer on the inside. Stedman Marlin, 95 in the middle. Spencer up to 11th when he crossed the strike that time. Greg Biffle 
Still trying to find a way around Stacy Compton for the lead. Michael Waltrip losing his drafting help. Well, now he's going to slide in line behind third place, Jason Keller. Remember, Michael, that white hooded car is one lap down in 30th place. And tomorrow, the Daytona 500, folks. 12 noon on NBC, and Jimmy, Jimmy, careful there. You're going to have the same trouble with the right front fender you have the left front fender. Ricky Hendrick in the five, and Randy LaJoy in the seven, almost had a Jimmy Spencer sandwich. And that would have been one tough piece of beef. Michael Waltrip still trying to find any help he can get to get up and around the race leader. Here comes Matt Kenseth. He'll join in. And Scott Riggs in the 10 car. A couple of Fords, the 17, the white car, the 10. Scott Riggs. The 57 is a Ford car. On board, Jason Keller. Junior's going to do everything he can to help Michael because he really wants Michael to help him at the end of this race if they can get on the same lap. Biffle, on the other hand, would rather keep Michael a lap down just for that same reason. Got three Fords in that outside lane. Two of them are teammates, the 57 of Keller and the 10 of Riggs. I think the big factor here is having Matt Kenseth join into that group because Junior by himself can't push the 99 car back into the lead, into the lead lap, but having Matt Kenseth behind Junior, now he's got some help that can get all three of those guys going forward together. Junior coming up inside. Greg Biffle for second as he pushes Michael Waltrip through. <laughs> well, that scared me. I tell you what, the cars went by with such violence and so much wind that almost upset our camera. It's getting ready to haul in trouble. Let's go to Marty Snyder. Well, Alan, Mike McLaughlin's had a chance to go to the hauler and uh, calm down a little bit. What happened out there, Mike? I haven't seen a replay. I, I can't honestly say. Uh, as far as I know, somebody got into the back of me. I believe uh, you know, just a stupid mistake. Costly. Uh, but, you know, these guys will work hard. It's good bad for MBNA and everybody back to shop. All the motor shop. Done a good job. Should have good things. A long winter will end in disappointment for Mike McLaughlin and his bid for two straight restrictor plate wins will finish in the garage. Alan? So McLaughlin is out. Joe Nemechek went out with an early engine failure. Kerry Earnhardt was in an accident earlier. He is done for the day, as are Jeff Fuller, Chad Chapman, and Jeff Spraker. Stacy Compton leads at Daytona. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Here's our Napa Field summary as we're just past 175 miles of today's 300 NASCAR Busch Series miler. Leaders today, Jimmy Spencer, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Stacy Compton, David Green, Michael Waltrip, and Greg Biffle. A couple of caution flags, one for a Kerry Earnhardt, Jeff Fuller crash off turn two, the other when Johnny Sauter and Mike McLaughlin got together off of turn number two. Notables out of the race include Kerry Earnhardt and Joni Michek, the pole sitter who went out with an early engine failure. And you can see that Dale Earnhardt Jr., the three car, has retaken the lead. And here comes Jimmy Spencer for second spot alongside David Green. I'm sorry, that's Matt Kenseth. Yep. Where'd David Green go? I thought he was up there. He's not far behind him. Greg Biffle in the 60s, Stacy Compton in the 59. Compton was the leader until Junior pushed by. And that's big for Michael Waltrip, who's on the tail end of the lead lap if he can get a caution here. Caution behind him. Trouble coming to the start-finish line. Hank Parker Jr.'s in it. Andy Kirby's in it. Tony Raines is in it. Christian Elder and Tim Sauter. You all right? Yep. Third yellow of the day. Now Michael Waltrip has to beat Dale Earnhardt Jr. back around to the flag which I don't think that's going to be a problem. And Dale Jr.'s backing off. He's backed off. The entire field has backed off, and Michael is just safely out there in front. So he is going to get that lap back with a very fast race car. Crash coming into the tri-oval. Sweeping up five cars. Ever see Hank Parker Jr. trying to get a very beat-up GNC car back to the pit area. Go behind the wall with this thing. Let's get set up. 
It's Gary Cogswell, his crew chief. You saw Tim Sauter drive by him there. Just uh, had to get around F-46. Everything would have been fine. And it looked like it was a lot better for him. <laughs> They're talking about the chassis setup and, the and how it was working. Right there's the third finish line, Hank. Let's get back there and see what we got. We get the toolbox back there to Jack and Sam. See what we can do here. I don't think the driver was talking about the handling either when he was mentioning that. He was just trying to get... We'll have to see the replay on it. There's Andy Kirby's car. Christian Elder climbing from his machine. He's okay. Tony Raines drove his back to his pit box. Linda Namick was also involved. You see the 26 car, the Dr. Pepper car going down pit road with some damage in those of his car. There's Tony Raines. A lot of damage to that car. Well, what's left of it anyway. And again, the 77 car of Andy Kirby sits at the exit of pit road. So caution at lap number 76, just past 175 miles. Off of turn number four, here it is. Christian Elder comes up, makes contact with Ashton Lewis, the red car. And then behind them, they basically got into the smoke, trying to dodge. They lose control, and man, I hate that. So don't those drivers. We'll be right back. Third caution of today's EAS GNC Livewell 300 for the NASCAR Bush Series at the Daytona International Speedway. A wreck that swept up five cars coming off turn four, heading toward the start-finish line. Let's see if we can get a look and have, get Christian Elder and Ashton Lewis and just, I don't know BP, if he thought he was clear, he was told he was clear, it just came across the nose, and it doesn't take much here. Well, he just touched that right rear of Christian Elder's car, and he goes up in the wall, and the 46 hits the wall, and these other guys trying to dodge the 19 of Tim Sauter, the 36 of Hank Parker Jr., and... Big mess ensued there. The 33, Tony Raines, he comes across, has nowhere to go except in the back. And listen to this. Andy Kirby looked like he had it saved and came back on the racetrack and slid all the way up. Oh, man. He had it. He, he had it clear. Yep. Yeah. Got hit. Tim Sauter got hit in that inside line. He was slowing up. He got hit and thrown over into Hank. And I couldn't pick up the number of who it was that hit Sauter. I didn't see anything out of that one, Shield. And someone in the booth just said that Christian Elder all of a sudden started clipping grass instead of hair. You didn't, write, right. you didn't write that, did you? No, I didn't. I, no, yep. I, didn't, I just repeated something someone said. There you see Michael Walker getting that line back. That's from the flag stand. Hmm. So you want to be a flag man, do you? No, I think so. Drivers involved in the accident. Eight in all, getting damage in the crash, but all are okay, climbed from their cars and walked away. We'll see Casey Mears. I never did see his car involved in the crash. Well, all right, you're the all come down pit road, this final pit stop, and even Spencer's back in, Dave. He wants no changes to the car, but he does want six inches of black spray paint. The template that Johnny Allen is using there are two autograph cards, Matt. Some strategy down here in the three pit and the six pit. They are going gas only, a gas and go only for both David Green and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Gambling for a caution later. Marty. Matt Kenseth on the bottom of your screen. He is tight, pound and a half in the right rear, a pound out of the right front. He wanted the windshield clean. It is very bright on the racetrack. He's already lost the race on pit road. Dale Jr. won that, but it's a pretty quick stop for these guys in four tires. And the reason for that black tape on Jimmy, or that black paint on Jimmy Spencer's car is because of that glare that we saw out of that one in car. It is really bad out there right now. Well, considering we started two hours late because of rain, that sun glare would be a problem 
I don't think it crossed anybody's mind this morning when they were getting their cars I think, ready. I think I would have been asking for a dark pair of goggles, <laughs> too. So Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s team, a little strategy gamble there. No tires on this stop. We'll be back to Daytona. TNT Sports welcomes you back live to the Daytona International Speedway and the EAS GNC Live Well 300 for the NASCAR Bush Series. And Tony, first of all, let's talk about the glare situation for the drivers. As Alan pointed out before the break, not something a lot of people probably thought about this morning. What's it now, like? In this part of the afternoon, it is very, very tough, especially coming off a of turn four. You're looking directly into the sunshine, and it, it makes it very, very difficult to see. you got to keep in mind, we're at Daytona Beach. There's a lot of sand here, and that sand pits those windscreens, and every time it pits the windscreen, it makes it look like a little star. So all that sand and, and grit there, it really takes its toll on the windshield. And that's why they tried to paint part of the windshield on Spencer's car to try and diminish some of that glare. Exactly. You, you can put a dark shield on your visor, but you're still getting the glare into the into your eyes. So if they put that, that black paint on there, hopefully it, it'll shield that enough to, the, to where he can see underneath that and not have the, gl the glare right in his eyes. But also, I told you guys, Jimmy Spencer was going to get back to the front before this thing was you over, and he got it before get, the pit stop. You even. couldn't wait to get that, and he'd worked his way back up to second, but then now his strategy's out the window. Well, it's out the window, but he knows he's got a good enough car that he can win this thing. If he can get back to second from coming clear from the back like that everybody up in the front there knows he's got a, he's a contender for this win and they also know he's not in the daytona 500 okay. tomorrow so this is his day to shine isn't it well that's it not only is it his day to shine but he's awful hungry too so uh he's gonna be a guy to watch for the rest of the race okay well obviously some interesting developments including the guys up front that decided to take fuel only alan yeah how about that benny that was quite a shock because we've seen it looked to me like in all the stuff we've seen so far that changing four tires was very, very important to handle the race car, but I don't know. You surprised about that, Tony? All it tells me is that they're very, very confident they have very good driving race cars, and, and the handling is right where they want it. So uh, they may not want to take a chance on, on putting another set of tires that might make the handling just a little bit different. So uh, they obviously are very happy with the way their cars are driving right But now. you'll be taking good notes here to see what happens, won't you? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? Dale Earnhardt Jr. and David Green, the white car right behind him, just took the fuel only. Stacy Compton third car in line in that outside lane just got right side tires but he's got a problem report that he's got a tire going flat and as the field comes to the restart he's got to give up third spot and come to pit road there he comes down pit road he's following the pace car on the pit road ouch man what a tough great flag great flag a hundred miles to go at daytona Michael Waltrip restarts in 22nd spot. Remember, he got back on the lead lap at that caution. Marty? Boy, what an awful break for these guys, Alan. Their strategy last time was two right side tires and fuel only, but the car behind them in line said the left rear looks really bad. Then NASCAR told them the left rear looks like it's going down. You need to come in, and indeed, there is a cut in the left rear tire for Stacey Compton. They were in a great position to pull off the win today. David Green, goodbye. Back to sixth place. Matt Kenseth moves up to second. Yeah, this is going to be real interesting to see if Dale Jr. can hang on. I'll tell you what, I, I think those four tires may be the thing that you need here. We'll just have to wait it out and see. We've got a lot of cars lined up behind him right now that do have fresher tires. David Green in that white car that just got shuffled out of second, driving for Tommy Baldwin Racing. One of those teams trying to find backing, or there may not be a next week for them. There you see the top five cars, Earnhardt Jr., Matt Kenseth, Jason Keller, Greg Biffle, and Jimmy Spencer. Let's follow up on some of the drivers involved in that last accident with Dave Burns. Hank Parker Jr. is one of those drivers. His crew is working on the car. Hank, what was that like, and are you thinking about getting back out there? Yeah, we're going to try to get back out for a few more laps. We, uh, we had a pretty decent race car at the beginning when the clouds were out, and then the sun came out, we got real tight. So we were just trying to free our race car up, and... We had a bad pit stop, and it got us through the back, and that's what happens when you get in the back. I guess we're just going to have to work on it. All right, they are going to work on it and try to return to this race. Marty? Dave, here is a source of heartbreak for Stacy Compton. The little cut right there and a cut right here. The tire heated up and was warping on the side. That cut may have cost Stacy Compton a win at Daytona. Alan? Stacy one lap down in 25th place as Jason Keller gets shuffled out of third. Greg Biffle in the 60, slides up ahead of him. Here comes Spencer. 
And Biffle goes down to help Spencer since, since Spencer helped him get by. But look at Jimmy. He just goes by on the outside. Well, Purvis gave Jimmy a pretty good push there on the back straightaway. I don't think Jimmy had much of a choice. He had such a good run. He didn't want to get out of the throttle, so he just moved on up the lane. Bobbin and leaving off of turn four. That's Purvis in the green and blue 37. His teammate, Jamie McMurray, in the 27, right behind Purvis, but here comes Keller back on the outside. Chevrolet leads. Fords are second and third. That's Spencer's Pontiac on the outside. And Jeff Purvis in a Chevrolet below him. And all this is going on about 185 to 190 miles per hour. Last time by average speed, 186 miles per hour. Now remember, Kenseth and Biffle are teammates at Roush Racing on the Winston Cup side. Biffle is driving for Roush in this series. Kenseth is not. He is driving for Riser Enterprises, a separately owned team. I'm really, I guess, impressed with the Kepley engine in that 17 car. Robbie Riser told me that was the first Ford engine that they had built up in Wisconsin. And it looks like for the first crack out of the box, they're doing real well. Jimmy Spencer sliding up underneath. Going to put Jamie McMurray back in spot. Marty. Well, and a very impressive performance for the engine for Matt Kenseth, considering they've had overheating problems all week long, Alan. And in happy hour yesterday, they lost an engine. So that's why they had to go to the back of the field. This is a new race engine, and they were very worried about it before the race. But it's doing an outstanding job on the track right now. Oh, look at that three wide back there. Hold your breath racing at Daytona. Experience or not, these guys are getting after it. Well, see, now if they had experience, they would know better. And we would have this. You see, any experience, as far as excitement, is not a bad thing. Michael Waltrip restarted 22nd. He's only gotten up to 16th right now. How about Matt Kenzer? Remember, he had to come down pit road because the window net came down on his car way back at lap number 13. He was just in front of leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. when a caution came out. He came all the way back around through the field, and now he's up to second. There we see Michael Walter trying to follow Ricky Hendrick in the five car. Now we see Michael trying to pass Ricky Hendrick in the five car. Tony, these guys need to be a little bit patient because we still have a long ways to go. That's very true, but... I think it's going to be hard to convince Greg Miller to be patient right now. Even though he's got his teammate in front of him, we know from watching him early in the race that he wants to get back in the lead as quick as possible. So it'll be interesting to see if they'll actually work together or if Biffle will get too aggressive and try to get back to the lead. Then see Jack Sprague, the 24 car, following Jeff Purvis. Second yellow car in the picture is Kevin LePage. Started way in the back, 35th. Haven't talked about him all day. He's picking his way to the front, still on the lead lap. Looks like Biffle about caught the wall that time, Tony. Yeah, he's getting a little aggressive here. The biggest thing, they just need to stay in line right now because they've got a lot of guys that are in a hurry behind them. So uh, just wait and see what happens. Front four, single file. Double file from fifth on back. Been an exciting race so far. Expected to be just as exciting down to the finish. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Just over 75 miles to go in the EAS GNC Livewell 300 at Daytona. TNT's coverage of Speed Weeks 2002 as we continue following the buildup to tomorrow's Daytona 500. Alan Bestwick here with Wally Dolan back and Benny Parsons. What a thrilling race this has been. This has been fantastic, and today's only 300 miles. Tomorrow, I think it's going to be about like this for 500 miles. Getting a little edgy. We use that word at the yeah, start. This is getting lot. edgy. It's, it's pretty good racing right now. It's very exciting. Who does your tie, anyway? Um, How do you get it so nice up there? Thank you. As Boy Scout training. 
Michael Waltrip. Oh, he's up where angels fear to tread in that high groove up against the wall trying to get by the 57 of Keller. Contact between the two. And Shane Meal at 47 is trying to push Jason Keller by. Meanwhile, Spencer on the outside of Bilbo for third spot. Those races every place. Michael Waltrip restarted 22nd after the pit stops at lap 78. He was sixth when he crossed the start-finish line that time. Which way is he going to go now? I don't think he's going to stick with Jimmy. He knows Jimmy's got the experience to beat him, yep. to run with him. Working on Greg Biffle for third. Yep. Very good ball. Bobby Kennedy, Michael Waltrip's crew chief. I walked up to him in the garage this morning. I said, how's your car? He looked me in the eye and he said, we're going to win today. And he turned around and walked away. Yes, he was very impressive in his com my conversation with him. How's the car? He said, it's terrific. Inside in front of Jason Keller now. Jeff Purvis is behind Jimmy Spencer to push him. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Matt Kenseth, and Greg Biffle are the front three in front of this swarm of race cars. 24 on the lead lap at this point. And as you see, just 26 laps to go. On board with Jason Keller as he tries to follow Michael Waltrip through turns three and four. This race delayed two hours by rain. It has certainly been worth the wait. And the finish should be outstanding. Will it be Dale Earnhardt Jr. or Matt Kenseth who won this race two years ago? Perhaps Michael Waltrip, the defending Daytona 500 winner, taking the checkers. Then there's the young upstart Greg Biffle, mixing it up with the experienced veterans with Jack Roush's team behind him. 25 laps to go. We'll take a break here, come back and set you up for the finish. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Tomorrow, it is the Daytona 500, its 44th running of the Great American Race. A couple of youngsters on the front row, but former 500 winners Jeff Gordon and Michael Waltrip in row two. You'll see it over on NBC at noon Eastern time tomorrow, the Daytona 500. This is Kenny Wallace on board with him. He's back in 20th. Make that 19th. He just goes by Casey Mears. Uh, oh, baby. Jimmy Spencer moving Greg Biffle out of the way. <laughs> Michael Waltrip going with him. And I tell you what, this could spell trouble for Dale Earnhardt Jr., the one and 99 getting hooked up together. And here comes Randy LaJoy. Oh, look at that. Jamie McMurray darting down to the inside three wide. The youngster from Missouri showing some bravery there. Tony, how about Michael Waltrip and Spencer? For a while, it didn't look like they were going to work with each other and try and get to the front. I got a feeling this is very, very temporary right now. Once they get back caught up to Junior, I don't think you'll see them work together that much longer because Michael knows as long as Spencer's ahead of him, it's going to be hard for him to win the race. So Mikey's going to be looking for any open opportunity he can to get by right now, I think. Now remember, Mikey's got a teammate up there in that three car. If they shuffle that three car back, he'll have a drafting partner behind him. Dave? And Alan, I checked with Johnny Allen as now Jimmy Spencer bump drafts Matt Kenseth or moves him out of the way. One of the two. Trouble. Crash. Greg Biffle right in front of the field. David Green in the six spinning onto the apron. Okay, Greg. Good for him. Okay. All right. Come up. Come up. Biffle was seventh. David Green, 15th, when they came across the start-finish line. They never made it to turn one. Caution is out. Here come the leaders, racing back around to the yellow. I don't think they race back to the yellow in this division. I, I'm pretty sure that the NASCAR Bush Series, those guys just kind of hold their position. Marty? 
Well, the problem for Matt Kenseth on the racetrack, you saw the contact with he and Jimmy Spencer. Matt has radioed to his team. He thinks the left rear tire is now cut down on Matt Kenseth's car, the teammate for Greg Biffle in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. So Greg Biffle out on the track right now trying to limp back to pit road. Matt Kenseth possibly going to make a pit stop because he thinks the left rear tire is cut down. And we see Jamin McMurray has made a pit stop, so obviously he and Biffle got together and uh, there we see McMurray on pit road. Lot, uh, looks like a Martinsville right door. McMurray, 25-year-old from Joplin, Missouri, in his 36th NASCAR Bush Series start. Former go-kart champion on his second season in the Bush Series in 2002. See David Green driving in. And pit road is closed, so uh, he'll have to start at the rear of the field on the restart. David Green led the first nine laps of the race. All right, let's check out and see if we can tell what might have happened here. There we see Biffle up there. Oh, I see contact from... That was Shane Meal, wasn't it? Trying to get a good look at that number, and it just went... He hit, he hit them both. Yeah. Dave? The crumbled car of Greg Biffle now on pit road. Left side damage. They've already gone to the right and changed tires. Didn't do a whole lot of fender pulling there. But Biffle comes in, and now they're going to really work on the left front. That appears to be where they've got a tire up situation. The left front fender being pushed in. So right now they're just trying to get it so it can finish this race. Remember, this is the start of the season. Points count here, and at the end of the year, Greg Biffle wants to make sure he finished this 300-miler. Alan? Randy LaJoy has come in. A few others. Ricky Hendrick is in. They've got some damage on each of their cars. There's LaJoy. Let's go back and see if we can pick out who that was. I don't think we can from that angle. Just in, in uh, front of Scott Riggs looked to be who the car was. All right, here we go. There we see the contact. That's Randy. Randy LaJoy. Randy LaJoy. All right. No wonder he has some damage to his car. And David Green got hit by Ricky Hendrick. Okay, there we go. On board with Greg Biffle. There is Randy. Pretty much tells the story. Hey, Greg. Tony Stewart, how about it? Well, it looks like Jamie McMurray's up there in the first car. I don't know where the contact starts, though. Looks like Randy gets in the back of McMurray, and that pushes him up into Biffle, and then Biffle comes back down. So everybody got into everybody in that exchange. Yeah, I think that Randy got in the back of Jamie McMurray, and then he tried to back off and turn to the right, and when he did that, he ran in the side of Greg Biffle. Cleanup continues. We're about a lap and a quarter away from going green. We'll be back to Daytona. The EAS GNC Live Well 300 is brought to you by General Nutrition Centers. Live well with GNC, the official vitamin store of NASCAR. Maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. There'll be 15 laps to go at Daytona. In the NASCAR Bush Series portion of Speed Weeks 2002, Dale Earnhardt Jr. on quite old tires compared to those that are chasing him. He's got to try and hold. I think he knows Michael's going to drop him as soon as he can. And you see Jimmy lay back just a little bit in the one car. Spencer trying to get him a good run off that second corner and make the move on the back straight. Stacy Compton in the 59 is the first car one lap down to the inside. He's in 23rd place. And that could mess up Jimmy Spencer's plans. Is that Jimmy Spencer saying he's got a flat? It is. Here comes Michael Waltrip to his inside. Spencer's going to slide up the track, Dave. Allen, 
Jimmy Spencer radioed in. He said it feels like a flat tire. The crew's going to go to work. He's coming in. Oh, man. Flat tire, flat tire. Wow. You talk about heartbreak. And Jimmy Spencer's not in the Daytona 500 tomorrow. Caught up in an accident. It is qualifying race Thursday. This was his Daytona race for the weekend. Start to right rear is flat. So it's Michael Waltrip who's now in second behind Dale Earnhardt Jr. Matt Kenza third, Jason Keller the fourth. This is Jeff Harrison fifth. He's got Scott Riggs behind him in that 10 car. The 59 is a lap down, Stacy Compton. And you've got Shane Neal. Kevin LePage, Jack Sprague, and Casey Mears floating into the top 10. And Jimmy Spencer is going to get a stop and go penalty. I was afraid of that. When he left pit road, the right side tires were still on the outside half of the pit box. That is a violation of the pit rules. You got to bring those tires back before you let the car go. Andy was speeding, leaving pit road, too. Other than that, he did everything. Mike McLaughlin. Rose. Pavement, Mike. Pavement. He's got the car back on the race. Well, he had the car back on the race. But, obviously, Mike trying to limp it back to the garage, it would appear. Last time at this racetrack, had a very similar situation, different cars. The Pepsi 400 last July. Mike. Junior home to the victory. And I'm sure the junior is saying, all right, Michael, one more time. And I'm sure that Michael is saying, hey, it's my difference between that and this. Michael Waltrip owns this car. That, that is a difference in paydays for the team owner and the driver if he finishes second instead of first. To pit road, Matt. Well, we talked earlier in the show about Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s strategy. Just go with gas only and save a set of tires for a later caution. Well, they got the caution, the problem. Hardly anybody pitted. They didn't want to give up all that track position. And then they start thinking about it. Richard Childress says, stay out because you don't want to give up the track position. But then Jr. says, look, he goes, if I've got 15 laps to go, he says, it'd only take me eight laps to go from 15th to first. He goes, I can do it or just stay out and just whoop up on him. What do you want to do? And they said, okay, pit. Unfortunately, he'd already passed the entrance to pit road, and now he's going to have to hold off his Winston Cup teammate, Michael Waltrip, to Dave. Matt, Michael Waltrip's 99 is the best it's been all day. It may be tough to hold off, but I just talked with Bobby Kennedy, the crew chief, and Bobby said that Junior radioed in and said, hey, don't let the 99 forget who helped him get his lap back. So who knows? Michael may defer to Junior. Marty? Well, Matt Kenseth was worried about his tire going down, and uh, he made contact with Jimmy Spencer. That's why Spencer's tire went down a little bit before that wreck happened last time. Matt's car continues to be a little bit tight, so he works better in the high lane, but he needs Jason Keller to go with him. That's his only hope to win the race. And we talked a lot about this about last year, about letting guys get their lap back. Yeah. They Eventually, one of these races is going to bite one of these leaders for letting a guy get his lap back. He's going to come back and beat you. All right, Tony, 10 laps to go. You're Michael Waltrip, you're Matt Kenseth. What do you do if you're in each of those situations? <laughs> if you're Matt Kenseth, you're kind of stuck right now knowing that Michael Waltrip and Junior are teammates. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what Michael's thinking right now. I mean, he's got an opportunity to win the race, but at the same time, uh, like you said, Junior was the guy that did help him get his lap back. So. Uh, you know, it's a hard decision for Michael, but uh, you know, whatever decision he makes today, that may affect what happens tomorrow also. Ooh, there's a good point. And, but I tell you guys, in, this, in these top four cars we see right here, I don't think there's anybody wants this victory any more than Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the three car. And after all, this is Richard Childress's car. This is the three. This is basically the car that his, he thinks that his daddy drove for, what, 20 years. He really, really wants this one. If he can win this thing on the tires as old as they are, he'll be able to take that set and cut Social Security before this race is over. <laughs>
Junior last stop for tires at lap 57. <laughs> lap 111 now. A lot of waving going on in that three car right now. Michael Walter backed up off turn four that time to get a run. What do you mean, a lot of waving? Right? I think he's either waving Michael off or just telling Michael to stay in line. You get a lot of hand motions going on, and Tony could tell you. There's a lot of, you know, just stay in line or come with me. There's a few other that I won't mention, but um, <laughs> there's a lot of talking right now going on between these guys with hands. And it could be that Michael, if he gets too close to, to Junior going in, it could be making his car loose on the entry, so, uh, especially with the age of the tires. So, it, like you say, it's hard to tell what's exactly going through Junior and Michael's minds right now. Spoiler in this could be Jeff Purvis, running fifth right now in that 37 car. We haven't seen Jason Keller really with the muscle to get up there and challenge for the lead. But we know Purvis has the experience here at Daytona. He's won two ARCA races here. If he gets somebody behind him to push, he could get up there and really steer the pot. Well, he's got two hungry rookies behind him right now, Scott Riggs and Shane Neal. So they may just go with him if he pulls out. Seven cars in that lead group. Jimmy Spencer's taking his car to the garage. Yeah, I figured Jimmy wouldn't want to play after that. I mean, what's the use? Lap or two down. And he isn't racing for the championship, the points championship in the NASCAR Bush Series. <laughs> Top three are Winston Cup drivers. A lot of experience there. And now it doesn't look like Purvis can keep up with the front four. He's lost a little ground. that Biffler going by there? Looks like it is, yes. Putting him down another lap. Back on track, trying to collect some more championship points if he can gain another position or two. At least he's going to have a good seat for the finish. Yeah. Oh, the trouble. Goes. Casey Mears spins out of 10th place. I start to say maybe the race is going to be over, but... We have six laps to go, so even if they throw the caution flag, there will be a restart. No yellow. Across they go. And Mears has his car moving on the backstretch. Slowly, but it's moving. NASCAR race control radioing to their spotters on the backstretch, saying there is no debris. And so we keep going. It didn't look like the mirrors had made contact with the outside retaining wall. And the leaders will come by Casey Mears' car as he tries to limp back toward pit road. They'll be on their inside as they come down toward the start-finish line. Dave Burns. Alan, the two leaders, there was more in that conversation where Junior said, hey, remember, I helped you get your lap back. But Michael said, yeah. But it's my, uh, but Junior said uh, it was his turn to win because Michael won on Thursday. So back and forth, back and forth it goes. Bobby Kennedy did tell me again, he's gonna let these guys work it out. He doesn't know what, if anything, is gonna happen. Tony, based on what we've seen so far this week with the Winston Cup cars, if Michael's gonna try and make a move, he can't wait till the last lap to do it. He better be working on it right now. <laughs> It takes a long time to get everybody in sync to where he has to get Matt Kenseth and everybody behind him all in sync to give him the run that he needs. And you can't you can't just do it in one spurt. You have to do it three or four times to get everybody synced together to where you can get that big run. If you're third in line, is it easier to go with the guy that, that's second now or pull up with the guy that's leading? I think I'd have to take a chance with the guy that's second right now. If, if he pulls down, he's going to have the momentum. A little bit of block in here. Matt Kenseth looking under Michael Waltrip. I think it also depends on what the guy behind you is going to do. <laughs> exactly. Michael gives him room. And now Michael comes back. Uh-oh. Oh, Jeff Purvis Correct. spins out of fifth. Correct. This is the race back to the finish if they throw the yellow. So far, no caution. No caution yet. Watching the starter stand. Watching as Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads Michael Waltrip off the corner. No yellow flag. Two laps to go. 
Call from the back stretch is clear over here. Jeff Purvis loses a top five finish. Who's next? I don't, boy, it's gonna be tough for anybody to do anything with them. Matt's gotta have Jason Keller go with them, and like Tony said earlier, they've gotta do it now. Junior goes down low on the back stretch, trying to keep hold off any pass, but he's trying to get some drafting help off his brother, Kerry, that was out there in the 12th car. Here comes Kenseth once again, and that's 17. Fly, white flag this time, oh. by. Michael Walcher leaving that inside lane, tantalizingly open as they come to the white flag. Final lap at Daytona. Will it be Earnhardt Jr.? Will it be Waltrip? Or can Kenseth sneak through for the win? Kenseth has had two looks underneath Michael Waltrip. But Waltrip has not yet made a bid on Earnhardt Jr. Kenseth's making a Jason Keller behind him. Have help Michael him. Waltrip with a bomb and a weave, but not enough to get alongside. Driving a Richard Childress number three, made famous by his father. Here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. to the start finish line. Checkered flag, he wins at Daytona. Just like last July, Michael Walter pushes Dale Earnhardt Jr. home to victory. A little congratulatory donut there. Put an Oreo on the door. Oh, very good. Yeah, thank you. Very good. Yes, the Earnhardt Jr. in the NASCAR Bush Series had so many great finishes. Matt Yoakum. Well, Bobby Leslie and Bobby Hutchins hugging, trying to get in here. I'll tell you what, a very special and a very hard win today. It's kind of like Holmes, an RCR car with a three on it, and an Earnhardt going to victory lane with us. It's awesome. we got to thank Oreo and Ritz and Nabisco for what they've done for us this week. This guy right here, Bobby Leslie, put this baby in victory lane. Bob, do you ever think those old tires would hold up like that and let him go to victory lane? When you got Dale Earnhardt driving, it'll hold up. Man, he did a great job. Great job. A big and very special win down here in the three pit. Dale Jr. with his first Bush race at Daytona. Will Lynn, Danny Lawrence giving Bobby a hug. People that worked with Dale Earnhardt for years and years and years. What a treat it will be for them. Oh, this is so, so special for that whole crew and the driver. Uh-oh. Here we go. Good thing he's doing that on the grass. <laughs> I don't think there's much rubber left on those things too on the pavement. Remember this scene? Nice job, Dale. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s third NASCAR Bush Series race at Daytona. His first victory. We'll talk with him in the winner's circle when we come back. Welcome to the Autotrader.com post-race show on TNT, our follow-up coverage of today's NASCAR Bush Series victory by Dale Earnhardt Jr. Two hours delayed by rain. It was worth the wait. Very exciting race. Nine lead changes among six different drivers came down to a shootout between Dale Earnhardt Jr., Michael Waltrip, and Matt Kenseth. And it was Earnhardt Jr. who picked up the victory in the famous number three. Marty? A congratulatory hug and a little conversation with Bobby Hutchins, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. will climb out. And for a guy who said this is his hobby, I think he's doing a pretty good job at this hobby, having a good time. So surprised at all the liquid refreshment flying. Go ahead, get everybody wet. Oh, here comes the mosh pit dive. I think they're happy. Welcome back to Daytona's Victory Lane. Phil, is Phil is good the second time? Good job, 
buddy. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I think the party's going without you. They're wide open, man. <laughs> Tell us about the race. That looked like a lot of fun. It was. I was uh, <laughs> real happy. Thank you, Richard Childers, uh, Teresa Earnhardt, Oreo Nabisco, Chris Crackers. Everybody put this together. Uh, this was a special deal. This was, this was for fun, you know. And this is what's supposed to happen. I mean, this is just for a good time. And I'm telling you what, winning, I didn't have, you know, I didn't have all the confidence in the world we was going to win, but uh, we stayed out there on old tires, and, and up front I could keep the car free. But this is good. This is great. Number three back in victory lane. Tell us about those old tires from lap 57 to the end of the race. Is that a premonition of tomorrow, maybe? I just drove as hard as I could. I had my buddy Michael behind me. And uh, I know how bad he was wanting to win this race, but just imagine if it was a Daytona 500, Michael. So uh, I want to thank him. Uh, Matt Kenseth helped me a lot. I think Matt might have been helping me keep Michael behind me. I don't know, but uh, it's hard to tell what was going on back there uh, at the last few laps. And uh, I just trying to keep on the bottom of my car. I had, to, I had a lot, lot less gear than everybody else, and it would lead real good. Uh, when I got side by side with people, I, I had a tough time, but I led real good. But, it worked out. I mean, good job, Bobby Hutchins, like I said, Rich Childers, all these guys, and Heiser Bush, you know, for letting me get out of red for a little bit and uh, do something a little different, a little, a little unique, and uh, that's a good tribute, you know I mean? I try to downplay everything about the number three and my father and everything, but winning the race, now I don't know if I want to downplay <laughs> Now, what does it mean to you to bring the number three Richard Childers car back to victory lane, especially at Daytona? I'm just, I know Daddy would be real happy. Um... I know Richard must be happy about this. All the guys at RCR that um, miss my father dearly, I'm, I'm sure this is a good time for them. Uh, you know, one last hurrah, I guess. One last hurrah, maybe our big hurrah tomorrow. His father brought the number three car to victory lane 32 times at Daytona. Today, Dell Jr. makes it trip number 33 for the number three car at Daytona. Let's climb in and ask Richard a question real quick. Richard, the three car of Richard Childress racing back in victory lane at Daytona. What a special feeling. Yeah, this is, this is where it belongs. These guys work so hard. Dale drove his heart out today. I mean, what can you say? You know, I'm just so proud. I'm so proud of what this young, young man's been able to do. All right, everybody celebrating, and Teresa in with a hug. Teresa Earnhardt, step stepmother of Dale Earnhardt Jr., is the number three is back in victory lane at Daytona. Dave Burns. Defending Daytona 500 champion Michael Waltrip shakes off an early tire vibration, and then, now clear something up for me. Isn't it true that you said to the spotters it was your turn to win at Daytona here to Junior? Is that right? I didn't want to use my turn up today. I'll use it tomorrow. <laughs> but Dale Jr. and I have been 1-2 the last four race days at Daytona. I think that's pretty cool. Very cool indeed. Could you not get around him at the end? You weren't letting him win, were you? <laughs> no. People ask all the time, why didn't you pass him? The reason why it's hard to pass the leader for all you people at home, it's because he's got the fastest car. <laughs> That's how he got in the lead. The reason why I got my lap back is because I put him behind me when I was a lap down, and he pushed me past Stacy Compton, and we got a lap back right then. I was doing all I could to put our Aaron's Rent Chevy in victory lane. Ken Butler here, my sponsor, and all the boys that work so hard on this team. My dirty SF posse. Junior's got a posse. That's what I'm going to call these guys, the Cheryl's Ford Bunch. We pushed it almost home. What does this tell you for tomorrow, Michael? What did you learn today? Anything at all? No, these cars, my guts hurt. These cars drive wild. They bounce around a lot with the shock packages that they have. Really nothing that applies today will, will apply tomorrow other than, again, pay attention, the guy leading the race is the fastest car. That's why he's there. So he'll be hard to pass again. How about a cold Coke cola? Anybody got one? Oh, he's got a cold water coming up here, something. Mike's going to get a cola. Rest up tonight. you got a big race tomorrow, my friend. And Matt, uh, did you learn which car stays ahead? The fastest car is the, yeah, you know. Matt? Well, that's what Michael was trying to say. But Matt Kenseth, you had a very stout piece. You try to make your move with, what, two laps to go? Well, yeah, whenever I could get a run, really. Uh, I finally got a run with two laps to go and got a good run on Michael. And uh, Jason was just a little too too tight to push me by. So uh, it was a great race. I'm really proud of the Riser Enterprise guys. I'm real proud to be uh, driving for Robbie and John Riser for uh, for all these years. And it's been a tough winter. We didn't have a sponsor until uh, last week. We picked up Jana King for uh, for here and for Texas. So we still need a sponsor for that for that Ford team over there. And a uh, great bunch of guys. And, and uh, we got great engines and, and good cars. So hopefully we can pick something up. Shades of 1998 and 99 with you and Junior running there for quite some time. 
He had a good time with him. Uh, for a while there, he was waving at me like he thought I was going to try to pass him, but I was basically just trying to block the 60 behind me. He was faster than me, and uh, I was just going to stay with that three car. So uh, I was hoping something was going to shake out where the 99 and the three got side by side at the end. Uh, that would have that been fun, but I had a lot of fun battling him. Uh, he's a great friend of mine. I have a lot of fun racing with him, and uh, plus he helped keep me on the lead lap. And Bill, just like the old days on the cool down lap, Matt pulled up alongside and gave him a few donuts along the door. Absolutely. Well, Tony, wow. That was some great racing. It was a great race, you know, to see Jimmy Spencer and Dale Earnhardt Jr., Michael Walter, Matt Kenseth, all those guys dicing it up up front. It uh, makes me wonder what's going to happen tomorrow in our big race. What is going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. I wish I knew that. Are you going to change tires with 60 to go? I'm going to have to. I don't think I can make my car drive that good for that for that many laps on a set of tires. But uh, it makes you think about what we're going to do for tire strategy tomorrow, whether to take two, maybe take four, or not, don't take any at all now. Yeah. This was a blast. Thanks for joining us. We look Thanks forward for to seeing us. you later this season on TNT. We've had a blast, guys. All right. Tony Stewart starts sixth tomorrow in the 44th running of the Daytona 500. Dale Earnhardt Jr. goes to victory lane today, and tomorrow he will try and do the Daytona sweep for just the third time since the inception of the Bush Series. Michael Walter at Matt Kenzis, Jason Keller, great run for Meal in the 47. Scott Riggs and the uh, 10 car also had a great run. Randy LaJoy, former champion, started third, slipped to seventh. David Green had promise, but ended up 18th. Stacy Compton back in the 20th spot. Jeff Purvis spun out of competition late in the race. Greg Biffle had trouble midway through the event. Jimmy Spencer was a contender for victory until he had a tire go down late in the race. And the rest of these guys with disappointing days here at Daytona, most of them will regroup and head to Rockingham next week. Joe Nemechek started first and finished 43rd. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in victory lane at Daytona.